So this lecture, 11C, we're going to look at three different laws, possibly four, maybe we'll get to the fifth one, but I'll probably break it down into 11D as well. I haven't decided yet. But we're at least going to look at three laws, Boyle's, Charles's law, and Gay-Lussac's law. Okay? First, let's look at Boyle's law, which finds the relationship between the pressure and volume of a gas. Okay? Um, what, so what that means, just quickly, if you increase the pressure, you lower the volume. video that demonstrates that. Here I am at the base of Mount Evans. Now if you look back up here, you're going to see a bunch of mountains and we're actually, I'm about actually to climb that mountain here. But I have myself a bag of Pringles Minis. And I want you to notice the, uh, uh, the bag's kind of roughly like this or you can push it down. It feels a little full probably compared to what you're probably used to if you live at sea level. But um, think of the gas particles striking this all of a sudden. But we're about to uh, climb on our bicycles the highest paved road in America, which is the Mount Evans Road. And we're going to see what this bag looks like. And it's actually, actually an application of Boyle's Law. So we'll see you there in a few minutes or hours. We're rolling. And we're on the highest paved road in North America. Pikes Peak Highway riding up. Uh, Mr. Creek, what, what altitude do you think we're at? Uh, we're right around 12,000 12, feet. 12,000 feet. So, now look at my Pringles potato chip bag. Now, compared to what we saw, it's totally full. Boils a lot of action. How's that Boyle's Law? Well, you see the gas inside, the pressure is the same. I'm breathing hard. The pressure is the same, but the external pressure at this high altitude is lower, and therefore the molecules, here, I'll try and show this. Okay, let's pause here. The molecules that are hitting this, well, there's fewer of them because they're at a higher altitude. But the molecules on the inside, the air molecules on the inside, they're the same number. Therefore, the bag expands. Now, we're going up there to the top of, of Mount Evans, 14,200 feet, I think. When we get there, I anticipate that this bag will be either fuller or possibly it will explode in my backpack. I'm not a mess. Okay, so I'll explain it to you right down the explanation of this. <clears throat> so Boyle's Law equation tells us that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. That's what this little fish is here. So if you guys want to write out the whole sentence for this, Boyle's Law equation says that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So I guess a question to my my buddy over here would be, if I double the pressure, what happens to volume? It goes down. How? It's inversely proportional. So if this doubles, what happens to this? It goes down too. So it's one half. So it goes down too. It would be the same as it goes. So it's not that if you add two, you decrease two. I'm doubling this. So then let's do another example. So if I multiply this by four, what happens to volume? Let's do an example. Okay, so the actual equation, P1, V1, is equal to, okay, so <clears throat> what these ones and twos mean for this equation specifically is that um, the pressure and volume at an initial are equal to the pressure and volume at a final. Okay, so we're going to be able to manip manipulate this equation to solve for whatever we don't have. So let's take a look at this example that I wrote for you guys. A two liter balloon at 0.75 atmospheres is taken up a mountain to a new pressure of 0.54 atmospheres. What is the new volume? Let's start this. We'll have my assistant tell me, um, what do we know about this question? What am I asking you? That's always what you need to ask yourself. What am I asking you and what am I giving you? So what is the question asking? What the new volume would be. Right, so we're looking for the new volume. What are we given? We're given uh, this, which is the volume? Yes. Well, so the volume one is two liters. And what's uh, pressure one, P1? 0.75 atmospheres. Okay. You said we're looking for volume, right? Mm -hmm. So 
one's pressure, what's the second pressure? 0.54 atmospheres. Final pressure is 0.54 atmospheres. So this is what we call plug and chug. I'm going to write it in a different color. So let's just put this into the equation. We have, we have this, we have this times this right now, so how do we get rid of this? You multiply, you divide it. So we divide both sides by 0.54, right? Yeah. Well, maybe, but I think you do this, I mean, either way, you do it, we will plug it in. Let's get the calculator out. So either way, when we plug it in, we can go, we go 2.0 times 0.75 divided by 0.54. Now, before I hit enter, Liz, do you think the volume is going to go up or down? Up. Because the pressure went down? Yes. Did it? Or down? Yes. Okay, we have. Duh! We have an answer uh, based on the calculator of about, let's see, using sig figs, 3.8. What's our units? Uh, liters. So the volume increases when the pressure decreased. Excellent. So what this, what Charles's law does is find the relationship of volume versus temperature. And what it finds, what we come to see, is that if you increase the temperature, you're also increasing the volume of something. You increase the volume. Let's look at a video that demonstrates it. Here we have an amazing example of uh, gas laws, Charles's law. What I've got is in front of me is a bunch of hot air balloons. In fact, one's way already up in the sky right here. And if you'll notice, occasionally what they're doing is they're throwing some fire. You can see the fire right there that they're throwing in. Uh, they're basically they're heating up some air. And as they heat up the air, what they're doing is they're causing the gas to expand, the air to expand. It is less dense when it is um, hot than when it is cold. Charles' law says is the higher the temperature, the higher the volume. It's a direct relationship. And by doing that, that of course allows these hot air balloons to uh, rise up in the sky, as we can see with the one right here way way up there already he's the first one to take off and now the rest of these are about to take off in just a moment occasionally you will see the uh, fire turn on in here and that fire is an indication of course they're trying to keep the balloon um, going higher and higher by expanding that gas using Charles's law so these guys who love to fly their hot air balloons are uh, utilizing Charles's law over and over and over again law tells us that, and you want to write this down, volume is directly proportional to temperature. We have a little symbol for it. Okay, you'll notice that looks a little bit different than the other ones because this is volume is directly proportional to temperature. Okay, in other words, I'll write the equation for you. So let's, let's do a quick example. So um, when I say volume is directly proportional to temperature, if volume doubles, what happens to temperature? It doubles. It also doubles. Okay, so that, if we look at this equation, um, if I have a volume of 2 liters and a temperature of 273 kelvins, um, and I double this volume, what happens here? It doubles. This doubles also, which, ugh. Math, go. Math, go. Probably. And again, the same thing, I'm going to erase this stuff. Same thing with this equation. Ones mean initial, two means final. Okay, so you started like this, you end with something else. Okay, so when we're doing these laws, and I give you a word equation, if we're looking for something new, or a change in temperature, or a change in volume, whatever, then you're using one of these equations. Example done.
right, two things for my participation member and for you guys. Uh, we're in Celsius. What did I yell at you about earlier? No Celsius. What do we use instead? Kelvin. Kelvin. So to get to Kelvin, we take Celsius, oops, degrees Celsius, <laughs> degrees Celsius, and add what? 273. Yes, 273. So to, let's look at our temperatures. We are given, now here's the other thing I want to tell you guys. Again, again, you guys are given something in this word equation, okay? You're given a couple things. Uh, what am I asking you first? What's, what's the question asking you? What the volume is. What the volume is going to be at a new temperature. Um, so let's look. We've got a new temperature, right? So we've got 95 plus 273. Math, please. Three hundred sixty-eight. Right, that's our new temperature, Kelvin. What's our old temperature? Twenty-five plus two seventy-three. Two ninety-eight. What's our original? What's our starting volume? Five point forty-three liters. And so this is what we're left to look for, right? So I'm going to do the plug and chug. Liz can do the math while I'm writing it down. So we plug the numbers into the equation and we get 5.43 liters over 298 Kelvin equals some volume over 368 Kelvin. This is a pretty simple cross multiplication. So I'm seeing Liz over there plugging in the numbers at 5.43 times 368 divided by 298. Is that what you did? Mm -hmm. And so Liz, do you think the, vo the new volume is going to be higher or lower? Higher. And is it? What's the number? It is. It is 6.71 liters. Excellent. So that's what, that's what Charles' Law tells us, is that if volume increases, temperature increases. If temperature increases, volume increases, etc. Okay, so there's an example for you guys. Let's move on to Gay-Lussac's Law. Today, we'll be showing you Gay-Lussac's Law, which demonstrates the relationship between temperature and pressure. <laughs> some residual fumes in there. <laughs> yeah. Some flame going on? There you go. That's some heat. More heat. Come on, a little more That's heat. That's fine. Trap it. Trap it's it, not, buddy. It's not, it's not. I want to get the paper towel off. There you go. I see some flame. Your hand's in the way. Darn it! Again! Success? I would say, uh, fairly successful. Okay, let's do the problem. Okay. okay. Now, now the pressure is uh, 120 psi. Now, last problem you said the volume could be in any unit. Yeah. Does the pressure can it be in any unit as well? Yeah. So this is in pressure of, of pounds per square inch, which is. So I don't, I don't have to convert that to anything, right? No, you could. You could convert it to, to atmospheres or whatever, right. but you don't need. You don't to. need to. But the te the temperatures I have to put in Kelvin. <laughs> All so right, so let's write down what we P1 know. P1 is uh, 120, 120 PSI. PSI, that's a pressure unit. Okay. And uh, temperature initially was 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. And so my T2 is 35. It got hot. That's a hot day. Okay. 35. So I'm just trying to find P2, right? All right, so let's get those temperatures in Kelvin. So, okay, so if I add 273, I said we'd have seen that's 298. 298, right? yeah. Well, and that's easy because this is only 10 degrees above that. Oh, so this oh. would be uh, 308, oh, right? Yep. So I'm going to plug those into my numbers or into my uh, equation. equation. P1 over T1. So it's P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So I'm going to say 120 psi divided by 298 Kelvin is equal to P2 over 308. Kelvin. I'm going to say cross multiply again. So you can say 120 times 308. I'll watch this through. Is equal to 298 
times P2. Divide both sides by 298. 298 cancels, and 298, and that will give me my answer. So here's my calculator, 120 times 308 divided by 298 gives my answer. 124 PSI. Now the temperature went up, so the pressure should go up, and we can see it went from 120 to 124. That's so that not, not like, that's not a big change, no. is it? But the it temperature went only went up from 298 to 308. Right. It's not like we doubled the temperature or anything like that. Right. Maybe I'll just get a lighter. <laughs> Might have put some um, Dugan in there. Oh my god! Inside it? No wonder! It's gonna crush again. It's okay. It's splitting. <laughs> <laughs>